Hi, I'm Stefan, the BMW DIY guy, and I want to show you a relatively simple project that's going to help maintain the health and the life of your car, especially if you have a tuned or high performance vehicle and oil temperature is absolutely critical. We're going to be installing the Mosselman oil thermostat today in my BMW F87. So I'm a big believer in maintaining the components of your car, especially if you're gonna tune it or it's a high performance vehicle. So I have the Mosselman thermostat in my F32, so that's the N55 motor. And if you've seen my other videos, you saw how far I took that car, and but how well it ran because of all of the supporting components. So changing here to the F87 and the S55 motor, one of the very first things I'm doing is the Mosselman thermostat into this car. This is really a pretty straightforward install. It doesn't take a lot of tools. It's simple and easy to do. And I wanna show you how to do it to help maintain the life and health of your car, especially if you're going to tune it. So let's, let's take a look, let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna, have to, we're gonna have to take a few things off to be able to, to get to the oil thermostat housing right here. There really actually are only three bolts holding it on. One, two, three, kind of down low, back behind. And then this one big long bolt that holds the two oil feed pipes that come up right here. And that's all that keeps that on. But to be able to get to those, especially the bottom one, we have to take the air in, this uh, right air intake out. To get that out, we have to take the carbon fiber strut bar off as well. So the first thing you need to do is you need to remove the covers on both sides. These have 10 millimeter plastic nuts here at the top, one, two, three. You just turn them and they'll unlock. Now you'll also have a plastic retaining pin that your plastic trim tool is good for that you're gonna to wanna to lift and pull out right here. Same thing on the other side as well. You're gonna have one, two, three across the top plus your little plastic retaining pin. So pull all of those out, pull the covers off. Then we're gonna have the 13 millimeter bolts at the top that we're going to take out. So there's 13 millimeter at the top on both sides, 13 millimeter here at the bottom. Now, I may say it more than once, but I'm gonna say it now. The 13 millimeters you have in the back are longer than the two in the front. So when you put it back, make sure the shorter ones go to the front. There's also a 10 millimeter right here and then that attaches it to, the, to this reservoir. So we're gonna pull all of this off. So let me pull the plastics off first, and then I'm gonna show you pulling the 13s all the way around and the 10 millimeter here. Then you can pull this off and put it safely aside. Okay, so as you can see, the, the plastics are off with those plastic nuts that are top that are a quarter turn. They're just, they're not all the way around. They're not a bolt or, any, or a nut. They're just a quarter turn to release a little locking tab, then they lift up and off. Also could be an opportunity to clean any, any debris that you have up in there. I've got some pine needles and stuff I'm gonna clean out. Now, your strut bar itself, be really careful with this. Like I said, it's carbon fiber. It's really expensive to replace. And when we take this off, we're going to be careful. These 13 millimeter bolts, so one, two, three, four, five, six. You've got the two long ones in the back, the two short ones in the front. I've already loosened them with uh, my ratchet by hand because I wanna make sure that I'm, I have good even pressure on them. This has probably never been off before. Uh, the car only has 19,000 miles on it. So I want to be careful. An impact wrench is nice for taking, you know, long bolts out. A little bit easier on you to do so. So it comes out nicely. Now again, remember the two short ones in the front. All the way around. And then this will be off. Though, we want to make sure to get that 10 millimeter that's still on the reservoir right here. So let me set these aside. And then we will have that reservoir, which I've also loosened as well already. It's right here, and this is a 10 millimeter. As always, when you do this, just be careful you don't drop anything, because a simple job can become a long job once you drop something into your belly pan. Okay, so this should be loose at this point, so you can just lift up, and lift it up and away from all the rubber. So now you see, it's actually still kind of attached on both sides. You can slide it out if you want, but you also have these plastic push pins securing this down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the pins here. The one on this side, there isn't one on this side, but there is one on that side. So this side is free, but potentially, yeah, I can get it out without having to do that. There you go. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we're gonna take this intake out. So we're gonna pull our MAF sensor, we're gonna pull some of the hose clips, but that's our next step. 
All right, so the next step is gonna be taking our intake out. We have our MAF sensor, we have a hose clamp connector or a hose connection here, and then we also have your, one of your main feeds coming off for your coolant going up to your charge cooler. And this is just held in place by these little clips, so just pull that up and away. You also have a small little pressure clip holding it here in front. You just push those together and push it down. So now that's free. The other thing is you can just pull the hose clamp, or excuse me, loosen the hose clamp on this side. Because all we need to do is take off this front one. We don't need to deal with the rest. So we're just going to loosen this and then take this off. Now with your MAF sensor, it has a little locking tab right here. Sometimes you can depress the lock and it'll come out on its own, which it did. Or if you have to, you can use a pick tool and very carefully lift the tab here from this front edge to get that free, okay? So just lean that up out of the way so it's nice and safe. And then you're gonna wanna depress on either side of for this and pull it off. So now that's off as well. Be careful with this, it's a little bit of a stiff, stiff pipe. So, and at this point, the, your intake should lift up and free. Just work it out slowly and tip it up and out. So as you tip it up and out and away, because what we need to do is we need to get to the reverse Torx bolt that's at the bottom and your intake's in the way, okay? So pull your intake, set it aside, and we're gonna, well, I'm also gonna pull, we'll just pull the engine cover right now as well. So let's just take this, you probably leave it on, but I just wanna make sure I've got good clean access to this reverse Torx bolt right here. Okay, so let me get my, my intake the rest of the way out, and then we're gonna look at moving a little bit of the piping here so we can make sure that we can get cleanly to these bolts. Okay, so really the last thing we need to do is kind of get the space prepped, is obviously you have these two feed lines coming up to your charge cooler. The rubber one is movable, but the metal one right here runs pretty much right over the top of that reverse torx and you just can't quite get to it. So it's actually mounted to a mounting bracket right here sitting on top of the alternator, which is an E8 reverse torx. So you're going, you're going to want to, and I've already loosened the bolt. So you, what you're going to want to do is pull this E8 out so you can move this bracket around a little bit because all we need is just a little bit more space and as always, just be careful so you don't drop this. That would be a drag. So I'm just gonna back this out really slowly. Now, the other thing I've done, if you can tell from the camera, is I've also put a microfiber rag into the top of the intake right here. It's probably not a big deal, but I, what I, whenever I've got my intake off and you've got the pipe that's going down to your turbo, I always put something in it because the last thing I'd wanna have happen is have something fall into that, right? Okay, so that E8 is off. And then this bracket should be start to be loose where we can wiggle this loose to get a little bit more space. Because what we need is we need the space to get this up and away so we can get to this right here, okay? Now, the other thing I'm gonna do, so I've got my rag here, is I'm basically going to sacrifice probably an entire roll of paper towels and probably a couple of rags. Because when I'm gonna, as soon as I get this pipe moved, I'm gonna stuff all of this area underneath, so underneath here with rags. I want it all over the belts. I want it all down the front because I want to keep that clean. We're going to spill a little bit of oil when we do this. We're going to get a little bit of oil when we pull this housing off because we're going to pull the feed lines that go down to your cooler right here. So when those come off, they're going to drip a little bit of oil. And when we pull the housing off, we're going to lose a little bit of oil. So the last thing I want to do is get that on my belts or on my motor, especially when the motor's so nice and clean. So. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna sacrifice probably a full roll of paper towels. So pull up, pull up this little guard flap right here, reach down in here and just <laughs> make sure you don't lose any, but stuff paper towels all in here to absorb any possible leak that you get. So let me get, let me get this hose moved and then we're gonna look at all of this being all ready to go to start pulling this assembly. Once you pull that E8, I wanted to show this little tab that it's sitting on so you can see this is that tab that the whole hose assembly is sitting on. But there's a little loop right here at the bottom that goes into a hole under the plate here at the top of the alternator. So what I needed to do was actually press down on it a little bit and very gently pry it out. So now you can see this is loose and we're able to get to our reverse torques right here that's holding the thermostat on. So that'll give us enough room to get that done. All right, so let's take this a uh, piece at a time. So yes, this is a uh, T35. 
And it was very, very loose. It's like surprisingly loose. So let me back this bolt out. And the collar itself that the bolt goes into is already wants to sag down a little bit. So I'm holding the collar up with my hand to get the bolt out. We're, we're gonna replace this bolt as well when we put the new Mosselman unit in. And I have all of my gaskets, I've got all my bolts and everything set off to the side. So I have those close to hand. So now I'm just gonna take this and slowly walk this down. This is where we're gonna get a little bit of oil out of the bottom. Here we go, that wasn't too bad, just a little bit. Just a little bit. We're also gonna get a little bit more because there's oil in, in the thermostat assembly itself. We're gonna get a little bit more when we pull these. So now what I wanna do is I wanna take my E12 with a medium extension and come directly underneath to hit the E12 bolt that's right here now that I can get it. Keep in mind, once you start loosening the bottom of this, you're gonna get a little bit of oil leak out the bottom as well. But hit one, two, three, then pull this off, pull it out, and out and away, okay? So let's do that next. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so all three bolts are out, still in place. And at this point, you just want to just gently work it away. Yep, and there it went, there it went just like that. You're also gonna get a little bit of coolant as well. So I had a paper towel so I could transport this without getting a mess all over my motor. So, okay, let me grab the camera. I wanna show you that what this looks like a little bit closer up. You're gonna get a little bit of coolant out of here as well, a little bit of oil. I always clean this up. You can also change your paper towels at this point as well so it doesn't soak in. But if you did a good job in setup, you're not gonna have a big mess. So let me, let me rearrange the camera so you can see what we're looking at. So my paper towels did a great job from protecting from any drips. I went ahead and go ahead and cleaned up my little bit of spillover. It's a little bit still right there. You know, I'm really meticulous about keeping my engine clean because that way if there ever is a problem, if I have a leak or something, I see it pretty much instantaneously. So especially this is a you know new, new car, so it should be clean. But, okay, so as you can see, it still has, still has the gasket in, the original gasket right here, which we're gonna pick out here. And I bet you I could probably just pick it out by hand, but I'm gonna use a pick tool. So really straightforward and really not that hard, right? So we're gonna use a pick tool and we're gonna take the, the new gasket and fit it right back into place. It really only goes one way, the way it's shaped. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out is if you notice here, we have a red O-ring on the side and no O-ring on that side. Well, that's okay because the kit comes with new O-rings. Just make sure that you don't double them up. So the fact that this one stayed in, in the other assembly is fine because I'm gonna put a new one on, but make sure that if you have one left behind, you take it off because that would cause a problem, okay? So I'm gonna get, just gonna do a little bit more cleanup to make sure I've got no residue oil underneath and then we're gonna fit the new one on in the same process. We're gonna slip this end in and then we're gonna gently, evenly secure the bolts and tighten them down with the new gasket and the new O-rings here and here and then feed it back up into place. Now the one advantage, ironically enough, of doing this is that you could even potentially find an oil leak. So I installed one of these into a friend's F32. He has a fantastic car and he wanted the same Musselman oil thermostat in his car. So when we pulled it off, we actually found his gasket had a slight split right here and he was leaking oil down. It was, you could see where it was coming out and down and was starting to get onto his belts, starting to go down the front of the motor, which can cause issues. It can cause significant issues actually because your belt can walk off and in worst case scenario, it can get sucked into your crank hub seal. And if it does, you're in big trouble. So a belt could potentially eat your motor. So now, actually there's a great product for that. It's from Keys Motorsports, but that's for another day. But keeping your motor clean is really important. So I'm gonna make sure that I do just do a last little bit of cleanup and then we're gonna install the new piece. This doesn't take very long. It takes longer to explain than it really does to do. All right, so but before you close it up, make sure that everything is, is just right. You have both of the O-rings on top of your feed lines. Um, they're black, so they're a little hard to see, but they're there. I took the red one off, they're both there. The new gasket is in place and it only goes in one way. There's only one orientation for it to go in. And I always replace this gasket myself. Um, the one I just picked out looks basically new. It looks really nice, but I don't want to have to uh, worry about there ha have that be any issue, okay? So then you can take the new assembly and just slide it into place. 
Now you've got a little bit of room that you're gonna have to work with to get all these pieces to get into place, right? But once you have it in place, because uh, the S55 is a little bit tighter than the uh, N55, that's for certain, okay? So now you're gonna take the new bolts. And like I said, as a reminder, these are, these are 10 millimeter. So we're going to I'm gonna put in both of the top bolts, get those set, and then I'm gonna put the bottom one underneath. And then I'll show you about getting the feed lines fit up into place with the new bolt that comes down in through the top. So all three of those are on and uh, tightened down. I work my way gently kind of a, across and around the perimeter. You don't want to, to tighten one bolt down all by itself, right? Because the last thing you want to do is have this sitting a little cockeyed or, or a little with a little bit of gap in it, right? You want it to be pressed back nice and evenly. So I basically just hand tighten all of them, work my way around, you know, tighten the bottom one, work the top, go back to the bottom one until it's on and secure, okay? So make sure that that's correct. So take your collar. If your collar's worked off on the pipes at all, just work your collar back into place. And then you can take your feeder pipes and then just lock them back up into place. Now what you may end up having to do, because you've got new gaskets, but make sure that the pipes are into the assembly itself, and then you feed the new bolt down that's going to hit this collar that's down here at the bottom. Now I've got a little bit of oil on my collar, so before I tighten this down, I'm gonna clean up the collar. I don't want any extra oil just laying around. So I'm gonna clean that up, and then you're going to use, uh, it's an Allen wrench, it's a uh, five millimeter Allen wrench for the new bolt that Mosselman provides. Then tighten it all up, and at that point, it's putting everything back together and all the hard parts are done. So that's back in. Really, all we need to do now is just clean up and reverse order everything that we did. So you're gonna put your reverse Torx uh, bolt back in here. Now when you do it, make sure that the little tab is locked into the plate, plus you've got good clearance here as well um, on the thermostat housing itself. Now the hose is not sitting quite straight right now, so it's actually touching the thermostat housing. So I'm gonna make sure that it's got good clearance when it goes in. When it goes in. Then I'm gonna reinstall the intake. I'm gonna secure it, clip it down, put, put our hose back on, put our MAF sensor, plug our MAF sensor back in. And I'll kind of do that in summary as we go through, because it's just gonna be the reverse of, of what we did. So the bolt, the intake, your carbon strut brace, engine cover, and you're done. Okay, so let's give it one last look over. So you can see the strut brace is on and down and secure. All those bolts are in place. Plastic covers are on and tightened down. Again, 10 millimeter quarter turn to, to secure all those with the plastic pins securing on the outside. Everything down below is all set up. MAF is in, breather hose is in. This 10 millimeter here secu securing the reservoir is in, the intake's in, everything's good to go. So it's all buttoned up, looks great. As you can see, this really isn't all that hard. All right, so as you can see, this really isn't that hard of a job. I always give it one last look over, make sure that there's nothing left behind, no parts, no towels, or anything left around that could end up being a problem for you. So this really is something you can do with some simple tools at home. You don't even have to get your car off the ground to do it. And everything you need is gonna be listed in the description below. So thank you to Mosselman Turbo for making such a fantastic product that I had to have it in my S55. The link for that as well is in the description. Please make sure to click subscribe and the little alarm bell because I have a ton of projects coming for many, many different models of BMW, including the F87. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next project.